been talking for the last month about the Holy Spirit. Amen? And has anybody had some changes in their lives because of that? I think when we recognize that God is in us, we begin to realize we are never alone. Amen? So God is in me. Say it. Tell the person next to you. God is in me. God is in me. I'm a walking, talking, Holy Spirit-filled woman. Amen? So when we've got the Holy Spirit inside of us, there's something that happens. We begin to change. John, are you going to go ahead and play that for us?
we say it? Because we are and we need to say what the truth is. I am a child of God. You know, we have the flesh part of us and there's some of us that may have been a slave to the flesh. Some of us may have been. Some of us still kind of, we're dealing with that. But you know, we're going to be a slave to something, aren't we? But you know, when you're a child of God, God has justified you. Which means when he died on the cross, was buried, and rose again, he justified every single sin all over the world and in this room. Can you give him a hand? He justified you. So he loved you so much that he carried the sin. We hear that story, but we don't realize how does that affect me? I have been justified. I have been covered so that the Father sees me pure. Can you imagine your Heavenly Father looking at you right now in this room where you came to worship God tonight? And he says, I see you, and you look pure to me. Because I sent my son, and he justified. He washed away all of your sins. There isn't one he left behind. No need for guilt and shame and pain. There isn't one he left behind. He justified you. And you are, as a child of God, filled with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Can you give him a hand? Yeah. You know, we humans do our best, we do our best, but what God did is supreme. And I'm amazed every day when I think about what God does for us every single day and how he justified us. And then in that side of that Holy Spirit, the next thing he did was, because he knows us, he created us, he put us in the mother's womb, right? And he knew already what we would be and what we would go through and the choices we would make because he predestined us, Scripture says. So he gives us another way out. Do you know what that is? He sanctified. So he doesn't, all of a sudden you're saved and you're this perfect, holy human, right? He sees us holy and perfect, but he sanctified us. We're all working on sanctification. Sanctification, and what it means to us is this, when we're sanctified, it means that when I first got saved, I'll personalize so you can think of yourself. When I first got saved, I knew my sin had been washed away because of an experience I had. I was on my knees at this school and accepted Jesus, got on my knees, and I cried all day long as my sins went before me. That was my, my moment of realizing I had been justified. And then after that, I saw this, um, uh, what do you call it? Brand. brand. I saw a brand, a cross, being put on my forehead. And I was a child of God. And then the first class I took at this college, at this church, I learned the word sanctified. Sanctified. And we can't sanctify ourselves, try if we will. We can't work our way to being good. We can try, we can serve, we can do everything that the Christian leaders tell us to do or whatever it is, but we cannot sanctify ourselves by works. Only the Holy Spirit can sanctify us. And once we get saved, justified, then that sanctification begins. And once we are sanctified, that means the Holy Spirit is working inside of our soul. And he continues that good work inside of our soul. And it never stops. There's three parts to sanctification. And those parts to sanctification say this to us, that 
I start with sanctification. That means it's my beginning stage of the Holy Spirit moving inside of me. And the second stage of sanctification is when he continues doing that good, deep work in me. Can you see how the Holy Spirit is working in your life right now? You know, a lot of times we think, well, I got saved, and therefore that's all it is. Some people believe that's true. But honestly, we cannot do this on our own. We need the ongoing sanctification. So I studied the word sanctified, and I really wanted that word to happen in my life because I felt like I had been washed clean. Does anybody feel washed clean in this house tonight? Amen. Give them a hand. You've been washed clean. It's a big deal. It's a big deal because you can't wash yourself clean. And then he starts that sanctification, and in your heart, your process of life begins to change. And why is this happening? It's because the Holy Spirit is in you. You're never alone. We've been discussing. But the sanctification is the work of the Holy Spirit. And then you think to yourself, if I'm sanctified, if I'm sanctified, maybe I'll get holy. Maybe I'll, maybe I'll get perfect. Have you ever heard people talk about those Christians, they're hypocrites, because they think once you're saved, you're supposed to be perfect? Right? I mean, what, what a lie that is. You know, we are perfect in the eyes of God. But this work of sanctification will carry on till when? Till we see the Lord face to face. It's not going to happen here on earth. It's going to happen when we see God face to face. The sanctification process is ongoing. Just as when we ask God to forgive us, He does. And as we become more and more holy, we become more and more humble. We become more and more surrendered. We become more and more like Jesus. And our goal as a Christian is not to pray to get what you want. But our goal as a Christian is to receive what God has to give you. God has special gifts, special things He wants to give to us. And He gives them to us at the perfect time. That sanctification is ongoingly happening. But let's say I ask for it and I don't get it. So I begin to what? Doubt. And if I doubt, I come out of the Holy Spirit. Right? I just pulled myself right out of the Holy Spirit because I doubt it because that's the opposite of peace, which is living in the Holy Spirit sanctification. So we want to stay in the Holy Spirit. Do you know how you would recognize when you're not in the Holy Spirit? We all sin and fall short of the glory of God every single day. And what we do with that sin is we go quickly to the Father and say, please forgive me, I sinned. Wipe this one away, you know, get, get rid of this sin. And then we go right back into the peace and the sanctification of the Father. And the Father continues to fill us up with the power of His love and His presence. And He continues to move us forward into trusting Him more. As Angie was saying, you pray. She prayed for years. The prayers were answered. That's the sanctification process. If we turn our eyes from we pray and then we go tell someone else about what we see that isn't happening. What did we just do? We came out of the Spirit. And we're slowing down the sanctification. Now, I speak of this because our goal here on earth is to become more like Jesus, not to live in the big house on the hill. Amen? But our goal here on earth, we're talking deep tonight, is to become more like Jesus. Every day, we should desire that first. I want to glorify God. I want to become more like Jesus. Take our eyes off the problems and put them on the 
promise. And God has all of these amazing promises he's laid out for us. And we can have them all. That's our inheritance here on earth, is to receive those promises. But when we slow the process down with our own stinking thinking, right, that's when that sanctification process is still at work. But yet we have blocked a promise that could have been there right now because we have doubt and fear. Sometimes our low self-esteem can even stop us from getting a promise because maybe I want this, whatever it is, but then I don't receive it because I don't feel as though I deserve it. Any amens on that one? And we know what we want, and we know God promises, yes, I will give you all of the things, the desires of your heart, because I'm a good, good father. Can you say he's a good, good father? And that good, good Father wants you to have those promises, and He wants you to stay in the sanctification process. He doesn't want you to doubt or fear because He is in you. So if you have a promise, let's just pray right here. If you have a promise, and that sanctification process is with you, Father, we just ask in the name of Jesus, that you remove from each of us the blockage because of our own thinking. We want the sanctification of the Holy Spirit to flow through us like water. We want it to flow through us like water, purifying our minds, purifying our thoughts, helping us see things through your eyes, not through our own eyes. We want to be holy, Lord God, and we know that you are holy. And you give us here on earth the opportunity to be sanctified, to be holy, to continue moving in the sanctification process, Lord God. Father God, in Jesus' name, I pray over my brothers and sisters tonight that they will lay down the problem and they will reach for the promise. They want to walk this way through life with the Holy Spirit guiding them, Lord. Taking their eyes off their own thoughts and their own intellect of judgment that gets in their way. Father God, we ask in Jesus' mighty name that we may reach the holiness that you have stored up for us. And out of that holiness, Lord God, all else will be added unto us. Father God, we just thank you for that right now in Jesus' name. Give the Lord a hand if you believe it. Do you believe that you can reach the full holiness that he has stored up for you? Do you believe it? Then you will achieve it. So you keep your eyes on the belief so that you can reach for it. And if in your mind something comes in and says something to the contrary, you let it drop and you say, my God said, Jesus told me I am the head and not the tail. He told me that I can do all things through him who strengthens me. He told me that he wants me to achieve my goals because my goals are his goals because he's in me. So the things that you guys desire to do, he wants you to achieve those goals. You're not alone. We think in life that we're reaching for something alone. Anybody ever feel alone? You know, who do I talk to? What do I reach for? What do I do? Well, you've got God on the inside. And you want to let him out. Amen? You've got God living on the inside of you guys. You've got everything you need to achieve every goal that he has laid up for you, every promise he has for you. Just believe. Believe God's promises. Believe that they're true. Believe that they're going to happen. Romans 8, 28 through 30 says this. And we know, and we know that all things work together for good. All things work together for good. Do you get that? All things work together for good so we don't go into doubt and fear. All things work together for good. 
to those who love God. Do you love God? So we love God and we know that all things work together for good to those who love God and we love God. And those who are called according to his purpose. Are you called according to his purpose? You better say a big old amen. Because sometimes Christians sit around in a church and they don't even know they're called according to his purpose. He didn't put a baby in a body and a belly and say, not this one, no, this one doesn't get a purpose, that one does. He doesn't do that. He says every single purpose and person with that purpose will be fulfilled as they walk in the sanctification of the Holy Spirit. Amen? So you want to realize the power that you have packed inside your soul. And no, baby, it's not you. It's him. He's in our soul. He's the reason why we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. Because whenever we try to do it on our own, what happens? Either our pride gets in the way or we just out and out can't do it for some reason. Because he wants it. All things work together for good. He wants us to rely on him. So he allows some things to be hard so we don't keep trying to do it on our own. You know, us self-achievers, right? Trying to do things on our own, trying to make things happen until he gets you to a place where you say, I surrender all. I give up. I'm not going to try anymore, Lord. And all of a sudden, you stand up, and you know what happens? It begins. The promises start flowing. Because you're not trying to achieve. You're out of the way. He says, scoot on over. I live in here. Scoot on over. Make room for me to flow through you so you can be what I created you to be. So you can do what I created you to do. Every person in this room has a mighty purpose. There's not one person in this room that doesn't have a mighty purpose. But if you get your eyes off your problems and onto your promise, get your eyes on Jesus and the Holy Spirit walking around with you all day long. I just really want to bring that into you, that you are walking right now. You're sitting in that chair. I'm walking. You're sitting in that chair, and you are not sitting in that body alone. There's two of you in there. you got the Holy Spirit living inside of you. Wherever you go, you take the Holy Spirit. Whatever you think about the Holy Spirit hears, you want to be aware that the Holy Spirit lives inside of you. If you have a decision to make, how easy it is to make a decision when the Holy Spirit gives you the wisdom you need to be able to make that decision. Lord God, we just thank you right now for the Holy Spirit to help us this coming week to make those hard decisions. Help us, Holy Spirit. We all have decisions and things we need to do. And we just need to rely on you. We need your wisdom. We need your spirit. And to have more of him, what does the scripture say? We have to have less of us. I have to have less opinions. I have to stop striving. I have to start letting the Holy Spirit move before me. He goes before me. But you know what else? He's behind me and he's protecting me. And he's on both sides of me. I am, I am safe as I walk through each and every day because the Holy Spirit is surrounding me and living inside of me. Can you see that in your mind? And the difference to know that you know that you know that you are walking in the presence of God himself right now. And the title of our service tonight is Walk This Way. So we want to walk this way. We want to be a slave to God. We don't want to be a slave to some of those things we've been a slave to before. I don't know about you guys, but I've been a slave to a few things. I don't want to be a slave to those things. I don't want to be a slave to physical things. I don't want to be a slave to anything but the power and the love of God himself. Can you give him a hand? Because he is so good. He is so good. Scripture goes on to tell us this. Works to, for good for those who love God and those who are called according to his purpose. 
For those whom he foreknew, he also predestined. Did you know that God has a predestination for you? This is in Romans 8, 28 through 30. I suggest you study it daily and realize that you have a predestination inside of you. It's already been created. All you need to do, and that's why at prayer time, we just say we seek the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit will bring us to that predestination. All we need to do is move out of the way and stop being self-willed. That's the answer. Easier said than done. But that is the answer. We want to be conformed to his image of his son, Scripture says, that he might be the firstborn among us. Moreover, whom he predestined. Do you believe you're predestined? You got that? So you know if you seek God, that predestination will come to pass? Do you know that? Is that exciting or what? If you seek God, what he's got planned for you will happen. That's that. That's that. He also called us, justified us. And whom he justified, he glorified. And he glorified Jesus Christ who sent the Holy Spirit that lives in you. So he glorified us because the Holy Spirit is living inside of us. Amen? Is this a new perspective, perhaps? I'm watching faces and I'm here seeing people thinking, this is different. Well, it's the truth. It's the truth. Therefore, here comes the punchline to this to me. The reward verse is number 31. This wipes out all fear. If God is for us, who can be against us? Say that with me. If God is for us, who could be against us? Amen. Being a slave to the Holy Spirit gives us life to the full till we overflow with goodness. Being a slave to the flesh brings death. I'm saying, brothers and sisters, let's walk this way. Let's walk the way of the Holy Spirit. And let's surrender ourselves to the Holy Spirit tonight because we want to be legally owned by God. I don't know about you, but I want him to dominate me. Dominate me, Holy Spirit. The only thing I want to be dominated by is the Holy Spirit because I hate domination by humans. I'm one of those get back, right? I know, I can't stand it. But you know what? I surrender 100% to the Holy Spirit. Shall we pray? Come on up, Ange. Keep on laughing, girl. Come on up. So we want to, we want to surrender to the Holy Spirit. And we're going to pray, and if anyone wants prayer after, or during, once I put the mic down, come on over and I'd be glad to pray for you and with you. So right now, we want to rejoice that God is so good, but Lord, we need to surrender. So folks, close your eyes for a minute. And if you need to surrender more of you so that you could have more space for him, because he lives in you and there's only so much space in that body and that head, your way of thinking. So, Father God, in the name of Jesus, we surrender it all. Lord God, take our minds, take our mouths, take our lives, take our bodies. Father, you created us, you placed us, you predestined us. You have a plan for us to prosper us and not to harm us, but to give us a hope and a future. Hallelujah. And Father God, I just pray that my brothers and sisters tonight will surrender themselves so that they can walk that way of the Holy Spirit. Lord God, I ask for this in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus.